Sullivan. I'm a former IRS agent and teaching instructor with IRS. Welcome to my YouTube station. Today I'm going to be talking about never call IRS when you get a CP504 notice. That's a knee-jerk reaction. Don't call them. Anyway, uh, this is the home of the five minute or less uh, YouTube station. I have everything you need to know right here. I don't need a script. I don't need a suit. Uh, you can see me at all my, uh, all my, uh, my suit and all my TV interviews I've been, I've done about 10 in the last, uh, I don't know, five months. You can see them at uh, 777irs.com. I have some of them up, not all of them. I don't want to bore you too much, but I have a whole team of former IRS agents and teaching instructors that are with me along with attorneys and CPAs, and we handle IRS problems. I do these videos for three reasons. So you don't get worried, so you have a good education base about you, about your subject, and uh, more than anything, I don't want you to get ripped off. And if I can get, give you some insight or information, which I am today, this way you don't have to get all freaked out. Um, anyway, today I want to talk to the, about the vaunted uh, CP504 notice. It's the nastiest of all notices that IRS sends in the collection division out. So when you owe tax debt, you first get a CP. 14 notice, that's your initial notice, you owe money. Then after that, you're going to get your CP 501, then your 503, and then the 504, and it's nasty. It says, we're going to do this, we're going to love your wages, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and we're going to contact your neighbors, and actually, it's setting you up for the last notice, the 1058. Don't make a knee-jerk reaction and call IRS on the CP 504 notice. If you do and you tell them you can't pay, you are authorizing IRS to say, hey, I don't have the money to, uh, that's okay, file a federal tax lien because I don't have the money. You want to wait this process out and usually go ahead and have your appeal hearing in the t when you get this a 1058 letter. By the time you get the CP 504 notice, you want to pretty much have either hired someone or make your own decision to call them, but you want to start thinking about doing this now. When you call IRS, they're going to go ahead and take a financial statement over the phone, and at that point in time, they're going to take a 433F. It's a two-page form. You may as well be familiar with it. You have the option of going online and making a very structured payment plan if you want. Most people can't do that. So you're going to call IRS and you're going to give them a financial statement. And generally, IRS places you in one of two categories. They put you into currently non-collectible, which means you can't pay at the time, but penalties and interest run and they'll kick the case out in two or three years. Or or you'll make a payment plan based on your 433F. Uh, but when you call IRS, as soon as you get that 504 letter, you're pretty much telling IRS, I'm throwing my hands up, I don't know what to do, I'm at your mercy. You want to have a structured exit strategy with Internal Revenue Service. What's an exit strategy? Well, when you call IRS, you have to know what they're looking for on your financial statement and how you're going to handle the case. The reason most people, you hear horror stories, they don't know what to expect when they pick up the phone. When they pick up the phone, IRS is going to stop the collection cycle, but now what are you going to be dealing with? So IRS is not going to be the nice IRS you think of when they look at your current financial statement. They are not going to go ahead and do that. They're going to look at your assets. If you have equity in a home, they're going to want it. And they're going to pay real close attention to your income and to your current expenses. See, IRS has what they call a national standard expenses, where you can only spend the money that they want to give you on your expenses. So for food and clothing, for housing and utilities, for car payments, and to operate your car, IRS is going to lock you in to what they allow you. If you don't believe me, go into IRS national expenses for food and clothing, housing and utilities, IRS national standard for car payment, IRS national standard for car operation. You will see that IRS is going to dictate to you what you can spend. So don't get caught up in the trap. If you're calling them and you don't know what the national standard protocol is and you don't know how they're going to view your financial statement, you have no business calling. I will tell you if you don't owe a lot of money 
and you're living from paycheck to paycheck, it's okay to call them because you're not going to have the money to pay a professional like you need to. But if you owe more significant money and you really need an exit strategy so IRS won't levy anything after they see your financial statement, you may want to give us a call. We will work out a good exit strategy for you. We've been doing this a long, long time. I've been doing this for 50 years. I know what I'm doing and my whole team of agents have about 250 years of experience. Give me a subscription if you would. Subscriptions are really big. Leave me a question or a comment. Make a calendar appointment or call someone else. I don't care, but I'm just telling you the truth. So don't get over freaked when you get these letters. Be relaxed. It's not the end of the world. Thank you for the subscription.